Hello students, welcome back to Top Notch Online TV, the ocean of knowledge. Today you are with me, teacher Tadias Baluka, the ocean of chemistry and a certified working chemical. Get ready to navigate through the deep waters of chemistry. In our today's lesson, I'm going to give you a chemistry trick to be able to understand or rather to determine which gas is denser or less dense than air. In this video, I want to help you to be able to remember whether in a normal examination setup, you're always told to draw a, an, a diagram or rather to complete a diagram to show how to collect a particular gas. For example, you can be told to draw an experimental setup to, to prepare and collect dry chlorine gas or draw an experimental setup to prepare and collect dry hydrogen gas. In that kind of a scenario, to be able to know the method of collection for dry gas, remember dry gases cannot be collected over water. So these gases are either collected by upward or downward delivery. And for that, you need to know if this gas denser or less than air, less dense than air. In that kind of a scenario, I want to give you a trick that will enable you to know which gas is denser or less dense than air without cramming. In chemistry, we don't encourage rote learning. We have 18 gases in the syllabus that you'll be, you can be asked to prepare, or rather to draw an experimental setup. So you don't need to cram the 18 gases, which one is denser or less dense than air. I'm going to give you a chemistry trick because chemistry is more practical and empirical than theoretical. So let's now delve deep to understand how do you determine which gas is denser or less dense than air. To understand that, or rather to be able to, to understand how to determine which gas is denser, or rather uh, the mass of air, you simply need to understand the composition of air. And you need to understand the percentage composition of each of the gases that make up air. We always say that in Form 1, um, air is a mixture of gases. The main components of gases are nitrogen, oxygen, carbon-4 oxide, and normal gases, mainly argon. So we want to know what percentage by mass does each of those gases contribute in order to be able to understand the mass of air, or rather to determine the mass of air. So let's go right away. We have nitrogen gas. The formula of nitrogen gas is N2 because all the gases except argon, they, uh, of course, nitrogen is a diatomic gas. So it's made up of two atoms. One molecule of is made up of two atoms. That's why the formula is N2. The percentage composition of nitrogen gas in air is 78.08. While that one for oxygen is about 20.9. The one for carbon dioxide is 0 0.03. While the one for argon is... 0 0.9. So we want to know what mass does nitrogen gas contribute to the mass of air. You get 78.08 divided by 100. You multiply by the mass of nitrogen as shown on the screen, which is 28. And you're going to get the mass contributed by nitrogen in air is 21.8624. The mass of nitrogen will be 21.8624. For oxygen, whose percentage composition in, in air is 20.9, to get the mass contributed by oxygen in air, it is 20.9 over 100 times the mass of oxygen, which is 32, and you get 6.688 grams, as shown on the screen. For carbon dioxide, whose uh, percentage composition there is 0 0.03, you get 0 0.03 divided by 100, multiply it uh, with the mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44, and you end up getting 0 0.0132 grams as the mass contributed by carbon dioxide. Then for argon, argon exists as a monoatomic gas. Remember we say normal gases exist in monoatomic gas because they are inert, or they have a stable electron arrangement. So they don't react. The two atoms cannot combine to form a diatomic uh, molecule. So the mass of argon is 40. And its 
percentage composition near is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 over 100 times the mass of argon, which is 40, you get 0 0.36. When you add the 21.8624 of nitrogen, the 6.688 grams of oxygen, then 0 0.0132 grams of carbon dioxide and 0 0.36 grams of argon, you normally get the total is 28. 0.9236 grams. So that gives you the mass of air. The mass of air, or rather the molar mass of air, is equal to 28.9236. This as we are assuming that one mole of air contains one mole of each of those gases. And that's why we are getting that, because air is a mixture. So one mole of that of air will be a, a, a mixture of one mole of those particular gases. And when we we add up, we get the sum of their con contribution in mass, we get 28.92. That Therefore, we can conclude now, using now the pragmatic approach, that the mass of air is about 29. Therefore, any gas whose molar mass is below 29 is less dense than air. And any gas whose molar mass is higher, or rather is above 29, is denser than hair. Therefore now, this is what I want you to understand. We have concluded that the mass of air is about 29, because it's 28.9236. So we can simply say when you round it off that, that becomes 29. So the mass of air is 29. Any gas whose mass is below 29 is less dense than air. Therefore, it should be collected by upward delivery or downward displacement of air because it's less dense than air. A gas whose mass is above 29 is denser than air and should be collected by downward delivery or upward displacement of air. That is what you call the downward delivery for gas that are denser than air. Therefore, let's get a gas like hydrogen. The mass of hydrogen is 1. But hydrogen is made up of two atoms. We get one times two, that gives you two. So the mass of hydrogen is two grams. So it is less dense than air and therefore should be collected by upward delivery. Get another gas like sulfur four oxide. It is made up of sulfur and two atoms of oxygen. The mass of sulfur is 32. The mass of oxygen is 16. 16 times two plus 32, you get 64. 64 is higher than 29. So therefore, sulfur four oxide is denser than air and should be collected by downward delivery. Get another gas like chlorine. Chlorine is a diatomic gas. The, the molar mass of chlorine is 35.5. So 35.5 times 2, you get 71. 71 is denser than 29. Therefore, should be collected by downward delivery. Get another gas like ammonia. Ammonia is made of nitrogen and three atoms of hydrogen. Nitrogen is 14, plus three grams from, of, of hydrogen, you get 17. 17 is less than 29. Therefore, that gas is less dense than air, and therefore should be collected by upward delivery. And that is how you can easily be able to determine which gas is denser or less dense than air. Very simple, as simple as that. Then there's something that I want you to understand. There are those gases whose mass a plus or minus two of air, or rather plus or minus three. Like for example, any gas whose mass is between 27 to 32 has almost the same density as air. Remember, the density is directly proportional to the mass. If a uh, 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 gas has a higher mass, it also has a higher density. That's automatic. So that is why we are talking about now density, but we are using the mass to determine which gas is denser than that. Any gas whose mass is be between 26 and 32 will be will will have almost the same density as there and will be very difficult to collect that gas either by upward or by downward delivery because if for example you have your 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 brother who is 59 kilograms and you are 60 60 kilograms it will be very difficult to carry that person so you cannot the same way with the gases it is very difficult to displace a gas whereby the, 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 the density of the hair and that gas is very close. Therefore, such gases are collected using a sewage. These are the likes of oxygen whose mass is 32. 
the likes of carbon 2 oxide, whose mass is 30. The likes of nitrogen gas, whose mass is 29. Remember, nitrogen is 20, uh, 28, but the mass of air is 29. So the difference between the mass of nitrogen, which is 28, and mass of air, which is 99, is very close. The same with carbon 2 oxide, whose mass is 30. Therefore, such gases is very difficult to be collected by either upward or downward delivery, and therefore they should be collected using a sewage. Thank you, we have come to the end of our lesson today. Now you know how to mine the density of the gas without cramming. Until next time, bye-bye.